because our guest co-host today uh, is the founder of a platform that connects students with PhD researchers uh, and also postdoctorals uh, experts to enhance their academic writing uh, and study skills as well. Welcome to the show, Dr. Amina Jonas. Thank you so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me today. It is such a it is such a minefield, isn't it? A moral minefield. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can talk about the AI's application in life in general, but let's focus on education because that seems to be where the largest debates are raging at the moment. Because what is the fine line between maintaining critical thinking mm -hmm. or becoming too reliant on a tool that is revolutionizing education in many ways? How do you sort of read the situation within the classroom at the moment? You know, I like to think about it as so when I was at school, let's say 10, 15 years ago, we were told, don't use Wikipedia, yeah. never cite Wikipedia, never use that as a source, right? And it's the same kind of idea because we just went to Wikipedia and we'd copy and paste, but who is the person behind Wikipedia? Mm. Is this information factual? And it's the same thing with AI now. What we don't want in academia and education is students to just ask the AI a question and then just copy and paste the answer as if it was true. Yeah. Because AI has bias, right? And my AI is different to your AI. It depends on what you've been saying to it and what I've been saying to it. Um, so I think that the challenge here is to get students to think, well, okay, here's the answer, but what biases could there be? What things may the AI have overlooked? Mm. Um, and just asking questions about the answer and not just taking it at face value. And I think loads of students that I've seen just take it at face value. And that's where the danger lies. Mm, of course, yeah. Well, let's talk about, because obviously you are based here in the United yeah. Arab Emirates. I love that we're embracing technology and AI. We are with the first country in the world to appoint an AI yeah. minister. Is that yeah, true? That's correct. Yeah. How has it been here um, developing your goals and being based in this country? Yeah. So I moved from London to Dubai uh, the start of last year. So sort of mid AI kind of, uh, kind of, I guess, introduction to the world. So. I was coming from a place that was quite a negative towards AI. So like I'd approach universities and I'd approach schools and I'd say, hey, let's talk about AI, let me do workshops. And I got no, no, no's across the board. And then I came here and it was just like black and white. I was going to women in AI, AI events. I was going to AI conferences, there's Dubai AI week. And I'm like, what? Like it's black and literally black and white. Mm. And I think being here has meant that I can really embrace the AI in education and just AI in general, like it's, it's huge here um, and I feel like the UAE and the Middle East has really adopted it quite heavily and have been quite accepting of it whereas I feel like uh, where I was before it was very much seen as it's more traditional we don't do AI we don't use AI it's mm. cheating it's plagiarism let's not use it and I was against that mindset so being here is quite it feels quite natural for me and I'm in the right place essentially <laughs> yeah um, I want to ask you a little bit about your platform. It's called Page Doctor. It is the largest and first educational platform where you used social media content to deliver education yeah. on how to use AI ethically. Yeah. Can you simplify this a little bit more for us, <laughs> lay, uh, laymen? Yeah, so essentially when I was in my PhD back in 2017, I started a YouTube channel and I just got my camera, I sat in the lab and I just did my lab work and I had the camera there. And what I was doing was I brought the the, the science and the academia to YouTube where there was no vlogger or YouTuber doing that before. And then when I started my business, The Page Doctor, where we connect PhD researchers to students who want help, I thought, let's also use social media for this as well. Let's try and make education fun. So whereas people on TikTok and other kind of platforms would do like dance and trends and just do kind of fun stuff, I would bring academic like twist to it. So I'd maybe mention like how to write an essay through those trends. Um, and I got millions of views through it. And that's how my business kind of, I never spent a penny on marketing. I just use social media um, and the trends to attract that young generation. Um, Do you think with, with the youth today, that sort of learning technique resonates with them a lot more than just handing them a book or sending them a link to a blog? Absolutely. There's actually research that shows that the that students of this generation have like a six second mo like focus mode. They can only focus for, for so long. Um, and then they're gone. So if I'm able to capture their attention in that six seconds, which is what these social media platforms do, then I've got them. Whereas, you know, they're not gonna read a book or watch a YouTube video anymore. They want that short, fast information. And that's what I've really seen through my business. Fascinating, we mentioned a bit earlier on that you utilize the skills of PhD researchers yeah. and those doing doctorates, et cetera, as well. 
And again, I suppose there's a misconception. A lot of people go, yeah, but where do they have enough time to be doing this sort of thing and consulting with the younger generations, etc.? Yeah. But do you find a sort of a beautiful synergy between the two? There's actually a lot of time. Like, there's a lot of kind of white space when you're doing a PhD. Yeah. So there's space where, like, let's say you're in, s in the STEM and you're growing your cells, and there's like a couple of hours where you need to wait for X thing to happen. In that time, you might read a research paper or you might do something on the side. Um, and in that time, they can work with the student. And we mm. found that actually, the PhD st like students that we work with that kind of are essentially our consultants, they've like really been uh, able to increase their skills. And quite a few of them have graduated now with no corrections on their thesis wow. because they've helped the youngers. And that's very, very much unheard of. Um, so it's been a nice way to help them, but also for them to help students because what we don't know is that in a university you have PhD students walking around and you've got undergrads they never meet yeah like they literally never meet you don't know they're there um, but now we've kind of like helped them meet and introduce themselves to each other and it's been amazing yeah still going four years now <laughs> I want to look into the future here because let's let's talk productivity yeah are our expectations in general of how much we should be produces, producing, how effective we should be, going to drastically increase in the years to come because of our reliability and ability to use yeah. um, chat, GBT, and all these other AI resources? When we're hired for a job, is it going to be like, well, Dina, you'll be the presenter, but you'll also be the script writer <laughs> because at, at the end of the day, you can plug in all these details and have chat, GBT write yeah. a script for you. I mean, is that what's going to be happening? The aunt, I mean, the. I mean, there's no way for knowing for no, sure about I that. Mean, I, I, like, I would say it's not nice to say yes because you think that it's going to make us, you know, burn out more. But I think the answer is yes because essentially what it means is that we, we can say, well, actually, writing scripts will take us half an hour instead of two days. Mm -hmm. So now I can spend two day, uh, half an hour doing the script, and then I can spend one day doing another task, right? And I see this in academia as well. Um, I don't need to spend two, three months reading research papers, I can ask an AI tool to help me read that and get a summary in 30 minutes, right? So now I've got more time to dedicate to the actual research. So I think, yes, expectations might increase, but that doesn't mean you're working harder, it just means you're working smarter. So That's yeah. a positive spin. <laughs> you're very good at your job, aren't you? you. <laughs> um, you've created a template which, is, uh, which supports students mm -hmm. with all their academic writing. Can you tell us a little bit more about this template, how does it work and how does it simplify learning and writing for students? So again, whilst I was in that YouTube channel, I was making content about how to write an essay, how to get into university. I thought, I've never seen like a step-by-step -step guide. So for example, you want to get into university, you want to write a personal statement, that's 1000 words. Where do you begin? So what I did was I broke it down and I made boxes and I said, your first sentence should be a quick opening sentence. The second sentence needs to be about your background. The third sentence, and I kind of broke it down as if you were a child writing a paragraph. Mm. And at the end of that, you've got your perfect personal statement. And I did that for every aspect of academic writing. So essays, dissertations, uh, thesis vivas, every single aspect. And this is not using AI. This is just breaking it down. And I had so many messages from people that have like ADHD or like other kind of learning difficulties saying, this is exactly what I needed. Again, just a breakdown of what to write and where to write it. Um, and this is sort of one aspect of my business as well that I kind of put out online as well. Yeah. Well, this is why you have the largest channel on YouTube <laughs> when it comes to AI education. No surprises there, Amina. Well done. Please stick around with us. There's so much more we need to learn from yeah, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, time for a quick break. Next up, we'll be finding out about some of the most popular AI tools taking the world by storm. So see you soon.